motion capture device that we can put on our cyclists. And it takes 30 uh, recordings per second. So it gives us an average angle, um, a lot of different data points. Um, it's so better than video in that we, you know, we've used, we use Dartfish a lot. Like actually that's what we were shooting those other ones with. And we've measured angles in the past with that for bike fits. But uh, with retool, we can put riders under pressure and we can see what changes. And we can quantify changes by, we can move their saddle, we can you know, raise their bars, whatever, and we can try to quantify that change. So it's a really powerful tool. Now that said, we've had it for about uh, 14 months. And it's like every month we find, try, we're finding new ways to use it, okay? Because it's just so much data. You guys will see that um, on the next slide. It's hard to read this because we kind of sliced it together, but basically this is um, this is Adam Adam's um, retool numbers and this is Ryan's kind of side by side, so it's a great comparison. I'm gonna on the next slide go over some of these, but you can see all this is just one take on the right side and one take on the left side. We're getting uh, like about 15 different angle readings or um, measurements in one take and. What Timmy was talking about here is just uh, their lateral knee movement. This is a, a basic outline of that. And we can see that none of these are very extreme. Even with, you know, with Ryan's looking a little different, it's still pretty straight up and down. It's like 12 millimeters, which is not a lot of lateral movement. We see some people with up to 60 millimeters of movement, okay? And we know that that's not a very efficient pedal stroke. The blue is the bike frame. Yeah, the blue is kind of representing uh, basically if you were looking at them from the front. Um, so analyzing it and kind of putting it in a form where you guys can actually see and, and point out some of the key things that uh, become of interest here. Um, so your seat height affects a lot of different things and with the retool we get all this, this, this is one data set that we get here. So we're looking at flexion. So at the top of the pedal stroke, how closed down is that knee getting? Um, there's a little bit of difference here. Um, 75, 80, that doesn't seem great. I'm going to come back to that though in a minute and see what, show you why that's pretty, uh, pretty special here for Ryan here. Um, extension. Actually, Adam rides a little bit higher relative seat height than, um, than Ryan. So his extension is a little different on each side because we've, over the years, found out that Adam has a little bit of a leg length discrepancy in his femur and so we get a couple of different angles, whereas Ryan's pretty bang on. He's like 149 on one side, 150 on the other. There's always going to be a little margin of, of error, even with the retool, because you're, you're doing placements of your dots anatomically, but it's pretty darn close. Um, now, biomechanically, a lot of people can ride a little higher saddle, and you can make up look for it with your ankling. So we see at, this is what we would expect, is that Adam has a little bit more ankling, so he's got... Uh, he's closing down his dorsiflexion a little bit more over the top and opening his plantar flexion more at the bottom of the stroke. Uh, whereas Ryan is riding a pretty constant, both sides are 20 degrees. So this is also kind of taking into account both sides. Their back angles, um, what Timmy just talked about, Adam is riding what we would consider kind of a relaxed road bike fit at 45 degrees, whereas Ryan is kind of more, I would say, in line with some most of the pros in the pro peloton race in Europe at 40 degrees, if they can handle it with their back. Uh, so that's that's kind of the range there. They're, they're one on either one of the ranges there. Um, hip movement, we're kind of trying to measure how much the hip trochanter is moving vertically in the socket. Uh, they're pretty close. We see a little bit of difference on Adam, and this is to be kind of... Uh, thought that it's normal because he's got, like I said, that longer leg, so it actually makes his trochanter move a little bit more on that left side, okay? His right side's a little shorter, so the left leg has a little harder time coming over the top, which is what, is what Timmy showed you in the, the uh, slide with the, the torque. We hit over the top, he has a little bit of a dead spot, and that's because of that longer leg trying to come over. Um, their hip angle open is almost exactly the same, so basically... Uh, when they come to the top of the, to, to the stroke, uh, what is that, what are they, how they close down? Now the hip angle close, or actually the wording is a little bit wrong, but when they're opened up here, uh, we see a little bit of difference, 8 degrees. Now, 
part of that is taken into with this five degrees here of difference. Okay, so Adam's sitting up a little bit more, so he's going to have more open angle. All right, um, and and Ryan's is going to be closed down, so that's not such a big discrepancy. What the big one is here on this slide, and I'm going to talk about it in the next one here, is that 80 degrees. So keep that in mind here. From the retool, we can get a general femur to shin length ratio uh, or bolt or measurement. And I kind of start to look at, after looking at a lot of data over the last 14 months, it's pretty indicative. Obviously, we've all heard, oh, long femurs are great for cycling. You know, it's more leverage, all these things. Mm -hmm. and, and what you see with bike fitting or with people with injuries is that it actually affects how they can come over the stroke, uh, the top of the pedal stroke, a lot easier. So you can think of it, okay, you have a long femur, but you also have a shorter shin, okay? And that shin bone is what's driving your thigh up. So if that shin isn't going, driving the thigh up as high, it's a lot easier to come over the top. That, combined with Ryan's relatively small cranks for his size, creates that 80 degree angle. And why is that important? Well, you can think of it as doing basically a full squat versus a half squat. Ryan's doing a half squat, he can produce a lot more power doing a half squat. Okay, maximal power. Because he's at 80 degrees, he's opened up, he can get those muscles activated a lot quicker. When you're doing a, where Adam is, he's at 75 degrees, that's actually still pretty opened up, it's not, seven, a lot of people we see at 70. But at the top of the stroke, when that angle's 70, there's that 10 degrees there, that he has to work that much harder to get open, so maximal power is gonna be less, okay? So that's pretty big difference that we get from the retool. It's hard to see with the naked eye, it's hard to see with video, and it was not what I was gonna think I was gonna see. I would, I would have guessed that Ryan, with even with his long limbs, that his, his angle at the top would be much closed, more closed, uh, but actually it's probably the most open angle I've ever seen. And like I said, we've been recording for 14 months. We've done probably 95 bits in the last 14 months, and that's definitely the, the most power and the, and the biggest angle. So it's pretty interesting for us to get that kind of data and say, wow, okay, is, you know, how we can kind of start to make comparisons in, uh, to other cyclists. So we're going to open it up to some questions. Yeah, I, I kind of forgot to have Adam and Ryan talk in person. <laughs>